Welcome to another edition of Inside EKU Sports. Greg Stoudelmeyer here along with EKU football coach Mark Elder. You win the home opener and the conference opener over Tennessee Tech 24-21. Always nice to have a W up on two occasions by 17. I know the frustration would come at the end of the ball game that, you, that they made it close. But overall, big win for you. Yeah, absolutely. It's great to, great to get the victory. Great to start off 1-0 in conference play. Uh, controlling your own destiny. Uh, so that was exciting. I, I've got a lot of respect for Tennessee Tech as, as a football program, their coaching staff, their players. I think that they're a very good football team. Um, you know, they started a comeback late, and it was good that we were able to hold that off because uh, it started getting really, really close down the down the stretch. But we had a 17-point lead with eight minutes to go and, and really let them get back in the ball game. We just got to finish game, the game a little bit better than what we did. But a lot of real positives out of the game and, and certainly excited that we are starting off 1-0 in conference play. Kobe Grace named National Defensive Player of the Week on the FCS level. He uh, was in on three of the four turnovers he had. Uh, two fumble recoveries caused one of them, had an interception as well. A good honor for him. And then Keith Rusak, OBC Specialist of the Week, uh, he had a 48-yard punt average and had one that was the third longest punt in school history, 76 yards. Yeah, both those guys came through with some big plays for us. So uh, we had five takeaways, one on uh, a little bit of a goofy play to, to end the half where we fumbled and then they recovered and then they fumbled. But we forced four turnovers on, on defense, and three of those were with Kobe. I mean, the first play, the game he goes out there and reads his keys triggers forces the fumble recovers the fumble that was a huge play the interception was huge uh, had a nice return on that there which was great to see so he obviously was a really critical and key component of us winning the game with creating those three turnovers so that was great to see and then Keith you know we expect Keith to be really good he's a we think he's one of the best in the country and he went out and did that I mean the 76 yard punt was huge I mean we were uh, not in great field position and punting the ball away and and we flipped the field on him right there and put them in a a tough position. So, uh, Keith, that is huge in a game that's going to end up being tight like that as far as field position is concerned, and that certainly led to us getting the ball with short fields, which helped us score touchdowns. LJ Scott, a couple of touchdowns. Uh, one really nice run got loose around the left and I think took it from something like 35 yards. Yes, you know, and, and we weren't as consistent running the football as what we'd like. They, they, uh, they're difficult to run the ball against and they bring a lot of pressure and, and pack the box, so we weren't able to really get something going consistently, but it was great to see two runs, that big one that he had there, that, that certainly was a big momentum gain for us, and, and then the, the second one as well was great. So um, we just got to clean up a couple things to be able to run the ball a little bit more consistent than what we were. Tennessee Tech was held below 100 yards in, in the first half, had 320 the second half. What did they do well, and where did your defense falter a bit that you can clean up? What, as you broke the film down, what, what lessons did the team learn? Uh, yeah, they just came out and, and they out physicaled us in the second half. I mean, they, they came out in the second half and, and that very first drive, that's their personality. They want to run the football and they just said, we're going to get in big people and, and run the football a whole bunch. And they did that. And, and um, you know, we had a couple of alignment issues that we got to get corrected and we did. Um, but well, we just got to really, it's just when you're one-on-one -on -one battle, you can't, we can't get pushed off the football and allow them to... Um, sustain a drive like that. Now we were able to get a stop. You know, we got them in yeah. third and short and got a, a, I don't think it was a TFL, I think it was just a no gain. And then they went forward on fourth and we got the TFL. So that was great to see. Uh, we talked about that with our players that they, they t tend to have drives that go 10, 12 plays that don't necessarily end in scoring uh, touchdowns. And, and we've just got to weather the storm when they do that. And, and we did. Um, but by and large, in the second half, they were doing that too much more than we can have happen in the future. Southeast Missouri is the first road game in the OVC in Cape Girardeau on Saturday night. Uh, they are 0-4, again, a little misleading because they played on the road and lost to Eastern Illinois 19-16 the other day. And uh, they have a really tough receiver you'll have to deal with yet again. Another good receiver that can get high numbers. Yeah, I do think that their record is a little deceiving. You know, they went out and played a Big 12 team in Kansas who's um, got a lot of skilled players, and they, they were competitive in that game, but that's a Power 5 opponent. Uh, then they played Dayton, and, and frankly, they scored a touchdown. They were down two at the end, went for a two-point conversion, tried to take it to overtime, didn't get it. Uh, so that went down to the wire. They played a Southern Illinois team very competitively, and Southern Illinois is 2-1. and one. They're one loss to a... Um, Memphis, who they were beating at halftime, so that's a very good football team that they lost to but were competitive with. And then 
against Eastern Illinois. It was 16-19. They had third and four on the 16-yard line going in. They had a, a great opportunity for a field goal on the next play and unfortunately threw a pick so that they couldn't send that thing to overtime. So although they're 0-4, it's not like they're uh, not a good football team. They are. They, they've been very, very competitive against good teams. And, and so we're going to have to come uh, with a great week of preparation and bring our A game on Saturday to be able to win. Jesse Hoskett is their, their quarterback over 3,000 yards in his career. Uh, what type of quarterback is he? Uh, he's, he's a good quarterback. He's, he's very efficient. Uh, he's got a lot of big plays. They have 19 explosive pass plays in four games. So uh, they've been able to push the ball down the field. Uh, you referenced their receiver. They've got two receivers that are very good. The number one receiver in the conference, he's got 29 catches. And then their other receiver, number 14, has 20 catches, and he's sixth in the conference. So uh, they've got two very good receivers. I think their running back is electric. He's, he's fast. He's quick. He's not the biggest guy in the world, but he'll drop his pads and try to run through you, too. So they've got some skilled players that, that they can get the ball to that, that can do something with the ball in their hands. So uh, they're going to test our defense for sure. All right. Thanks, Coach. Good luck against the Red Hawks of Southeast Missouri. Thank you. All right. That's Mark Elder talking about Curdle football. Here's our coverage plans. We begin at 630 with the pregame show at 100.7 FM online at EKUSports.com or on your phone's tune in app. Kickoff is 7 o'clock from Hauk Stadium. Coming up next, legendary coach Roy Kidd now has a permanent spot in the stadium that bears his name. See where next and we'll meet a senior, one of the seniors, closing out their season with EKU soccer when Inside EKU Sports continues. Every day is a concept that few people can commit to. Every day, requires a level of dedication that forces you to test your limits. Every day I'll give back to the community because I draw strength from their support. Every day the sounds of your cheers will echo through my mind. Knowing that you have my back means I can always look forward. Every day I'll be too tired to sweat and my bones will ache. Every day will provide me with the slight edge that I need to succeed. Champions are built every day. We are more than just athletes. We inspire scholars. We inspire leaders. We inspire champions. We inspire family. This is the Ohio Valley Conference. I, I feel very hum honored and hum humble but how many of you know that, that I wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for players, assistant coaches, and fans. And I've had all that kind of support, believe me. I've had a great staff. I've had some super players. All Colonel fans know the statistics. 314 wins, 16 OVC titles, four consecutive appearances in the NCAA 1AA championship game, and two national titles. And now, one bronze statue honoring Hall of Fame coach Roy Kidd. Coach Kidd and his family were joined by dozens of former players Saturday to unveil the statue, commemorating his 45 years as a quarterback, an assistant coach, and then, of course, 39 of those years as head coach at his alma mater. The statue funded through private donations led by former players. You can see Coach Kidd's statue in the north end zone overlooking the field at Roy Kidd Stadium it's already become a very popular spot on the EKU campus. Now we talk the other football, the one with the round ball, the world game, soccer, and Jordan Foster, a senior, is with us. It was senior day on Sunday, and, and you had a draw with Southeast Missouri, and it was hot out there. How did yes, you survive it that? It was really hot, but luckily they gave us those water breaks in the middle of a half, and Everyone was drinking water all day and we were ready to go. Yeah, because you extended and played 110 minutes. You had the equalizing goal in the 86th or it wouldn't have extended into sudden death overtime. Tell me about that goal. It was a big one. Yeah, I was really excited. I mean, we got to go into overtime, keep playing, but that ball that Jess, a freshman on our team, played was phenomenal. I mean, it couldn't have been any more perfect. It was right to my feet. and. I couldn't ask for a better ball, honestly. You had to turn the defender. I mean, you had to be aggressive as she was playing you. So in soccer, you sense that contact, yeah. right? And you had to get free to, to get it on your foot and put it in the net. Yeah, we work a lot on practice and practice on turning and how you can get around your defender. And I mean, that's where that came from and got around. 
Luckily, she, the goalie missed. We got the goal and went in overtime. Talking with Jordan Foster here. Jordan, really admire this team because it wasn't easy for, for these six seniors when you were young. I mean, the record wasn't good, but last year became very good. And, and you've really set a foundation for the future. Talk to me about senior leadership last year and this year and how this program has changed. Yeah, our, I mean, the rest of our seniors are so awesome. We learned so much from our seniors freshman year and even the senior sophomore year and junior year. They're all such great role models to us that I feel like when our coaching did change and we got new coaches, as you saw, it just helped us produce so much more on the field and show what we actually could have produced all those years. Only two teams in the OVC have not lost a game, and in points, you're ahead of Murray State and in first place right now, and I know a big game with Murray coming up. Yeah. <laughs> Talk we're, to me about the racers. Yeah, we're really excited. I mean, last year the Murray game wasn't what we hoped it would be, but also we had just lost our first game right before we played Murray, and then we just weren't in the right mindset, but it's the only game that week, so we'll have a full week to focus solely on Murray, and I think we're going to come back back and it'll be a whole different game. Yeah, now that game will be the next home game. It's October 5th. There's a couple of games in the state of Illinois this week, and I know SIUE's out yeah. there, and they're the one that in that heartbreaker in the OVC title yeah. game in the tournament last year. Yeah, we're coming for them. Now let's talk about outside of the soccer field and in the classroom. Uh, you've had a very good career here at EKU and your future, you tell me, uh, will be in a law school next year in all likelihood, right? Yes, sir. I'm hoping to go to either UD or UK and then hopefully go into criminal defense is my hope. And if not, maybe looking to be in a sports agent possibly. Awesome. What, what uh, headed you towards a potential career as a lawyer? So when I came into school, I had no idea I wanted to do law. I thought more like policing, but the more like I got into the class at EKU with their great program in criminal justice, I really liked the law aspect of it and I'm good at it. So I just focused on that and decided that was what I, I wanted to do. All right, congratulations. Great career in soccer Thank and uh, academically as well, Jordan. That's Jordan Foster. And that's our report this week on the ball that you put in the net. Coming up next on Inside EKU Sports, the ball you have to get over the net. We talk volleyball. EKU is the campus beautiful. The school of opportunity, where you are always welcome. And it feels like home. We're changing how we look, but our mission is still the same. To help you expand your knowledge, discover your passion, and unlock your purpose. Be a Colonel. Your time is now. Hit high and deep. Back of the end zone. Brown got it. Four drives inside. Put it up. See this one swung and missed it. Now Smith again. Block point tech. Nice turnaround by Johnson. Near post. Kick in. Any place, anytime. Find it here. The OBC Digital Network. Welcome back to the show. We talk volleyball now with Lori Duncan. The volleyball team opens OVC play in Nashville, win the first game at TSU, lose the second at Belmont. Let's talk about the TSU game. Controlled that one, 3-1 win. Yeah, we did. We did a really nice job. Um, we came out and um, we're aggressive. Um, you know, anytime you win on the road or you take a match um, as well as we did, you feel like, OK, you're building momentum. Um, the only unfortunate part of that evening was Nikki Drost, our outside hitter, uh, pre -com all conference. She ran into one of our players. Uh, we thought maybe she had a concussion. So she sat and this happened in the first set. So she sat the entire game. Um, um, so that gave our freshman outside, Lauren Kalenic, an opportunity to compete and play in a, in a pressure situation, and she did awesome. Um, I felt like we, we could have beaten them in three, but uh, I think with, you know, 
with the lineup and what we had to do uh, and the adjustments we had to make. You know, it took us a game to be able to make those adjustments. Um, and then that led into the next day, which was, you know, we're at Belmont. And again, I, as I said last week, you know, you get on the road and you steal a few, that's a good deal. Um, we were so close to finishing. And in many respects, I thought we should have beat Belmont in the fourth game. We were in control. Um, but we started off, we didn't have Nikki for that game. And then our starting middle, um, senior middle, uh, Sierra Coons also woke up and, you know, couldn't move her shoulder. So we ended up uh, being down two starters and still were in a position to beat Belmont. And Belmont is the team that was picked by the coaches to win the conference. So, you know, we're on the road. We're in a, in an, we have an opportunity to win in four. And then we get to a fifth set, and we were up 5-8 uh, in the fifth set, switch sides, and then the next thing you know, um, you know, they go on a 9-0 run, and we just can't, we just can't turn um, a point. And that, we got caught in a rotation where the two, the two new people that were subbing in for the two uh, gals that weren't in the lineup were in the front row, and we just couldn't score a point. Yeah, it's tough to overcome that heartbreak. But you know, with two starters down, uh, there's got to be confidence that well, we're going to compete at the top of the OVC. And, and that's what I'm, I keep trying to tell myself. You know, they, they competed hard, and I, I have to give our team a, a tremendous amount of credit. It, it's just hard, you know, as a coach, you realize how close you are, and um, you know that would have been a big deal to be two and zero. But you know, I think we made a statement about who we are without having a couple of our starters. And then the third piece is we've had a gal that's had. Um, um, an ACL injury and she's going to be coming back we hope within the next couple of games and so that'll be a boost getting our two starters back getting our ACL gal back that'll make a big difference and uh, you know I, I think um, you know as a coach you, you want to win them all and right. when you know you have an opportunity to do that you want to be able to seal that deal um, but you know we're, we're back in action this week. We're playing at home. We've got uh, Tech on Friday night, and we've got Jacksonville State on Saturday. And I feel really good about um, where, our ki where our kids are, where our team is emotionally. I think they knew we should have taken both of the matches this weekend. I think they're hungry uh, to be successful, and I think we're really, really excited to be at home for a full weekend. What's the one thing you, you think this team needs to button up to be just that little bit better to close matches out? I think it's, you know, we, we talk about it, it's that staying focused um, throughout the entire match uh, and, and then also staying focused throughout the entire set. Uh, you start to separate yourself from your opponent, you build yourself a four or five point lead. It's in those moments that we have a tendency to get not necessarily complacent, but we're not as focused about closing someone out. When it stays close, when it stays tight, um, we're a lot more focused. So I think it's you want to separate yourselves from your opponent at any point in, in a set that you can, but it's being able to stay extremely focused and prepared once you've done that and not relax and think, ah, we're going to win. Um, you can't ever go there. You've got you've to compete and fight to the very end. All right, good luck this weekend. Thank you so much. All right, that's Lori Duncan. It is the only game in town this week because football and soccer are both on the road. The volleyball team begins play on Friday night at 6 against Tennessee Tech, turns around and then plays Jacksonville State at 2 o'clock on Saturday. Hope to see you out at Alumni Coliseum. Well, that does it for another edition of Inside EKU Sports. Keep up with EKU Sports wherever you are. Like and follow our channels on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'll see you again next week.